hi everyone, thanks for introduction. So I will present uh, you the tool called uh, PG Feature Surf, where you can publish uh, raw vector data via OGC API features from a PostGIS uh, database. So just uh, quickly about me, um, my name is Jakob Miksch, I'm a software developer at the company Citicom. We uh, do all uh, kinds of uh, telecommunication solutions and um, my department is about uh, broadband, fiber internet and uh, smart infrastructure and so we are building an internal um, GIS system and we were evaluating uh, many projects, also uh, PG FeatureSurf. And uh, finally, we didn't use it, but I learned a lot about it and also used it in a um, private project. So that's why I would like to share my learning with you and maybe it will be helpful for you if you are considering it in a new project. So first, uh, the overview. Um, I will give you an overview about the PG Feature Surf, then um, also why it's only reading from a database and why it's only publishing via OGC API features. Um, how to install and configure it, then I want to show you the web interface and how to, you can filter and use uh, Postgres uh, functions and then also uh, some examples uh, where it's used. So uh, first of all, um, what is PG Feature Surf? It's a very lightweight uh, GeoData server. Um, so it can only read from one data source, it's PostGIS and published only by uh, one standard, it's OGC API features, which is the successor of uh, WFS. Um, it's written in Go language, and uh, this is quite nice because it's a uh, relatively fast, but also quite um, approachable language. And uh, for example, if you compare it to C++, and also it, uh, it makes it very simple to install. It um, was developed by Crunchy Data, by Martin Davis and Paul Ramsey, and you can find the repository um, on the link I show on this, uh, on this slide. And just to show you what uh, PG Feature Server is and what it's not, I want to compare it uh, to GeoServer, so which is, to my knowledge, at least the most uh, uh, the the mapping server with the most uh, sources and styles. So um, on the left side you see so many different sources you can have and uh, so many uh, different formats uh, you can publish with GeoServer, but uh, with uh, PG Feature Surf you can only publish from PostGIS and uh, only via one standard. And this um, can, of course, uh, be called, uh, like you can think it uh, has very l low features, but sometimes it's uh, when you only want to uh, publish especially, especially vector data, then it's very uh, nice and very easy to set up, and then it might be a really uh, good choice because there's no overhead, you don't have to install uh, stuff which you don't need uh, actually. So in some use cases it's quite uh, useful. So uh, why is it actually only reading from a database and not from uh, files like shapefile or geo package? So first of all, um, with a database, so in, uh, in this case PostgreSQL, you can uh, use uh, SQL for all kind of complex queries. So um, you can have uh, multiple data sets uh, uh, in various relations and make some joins and you can really uh, combine a lot of data sets with uh, using SQL. Uh, you have a very high performance uh, for querying because you can uh, create uh, indexes, so spatial indexes or non-spatial indexes. Of course, many people can parallel request data. You can uh, directly uh, write data and uh, read data at the same time. You can have different permissions uh, for different users or programs which access the database. Um, yeah, the data consistency is all, um, guaranteed, and yeah, the, the popular examples for uh, databases in the open source world is PostgreSQL, MySQL, or SQLite, and um, PG Feature Service, of course, using PostgreSQL, which should be known for, from, I guess, by most of you. So it's, uh, I would say, in the open source world, it's the de facto standard, especially because of the PostGIS extension, which has a, gives a creates a data type, especially for geodata, and also has some processing uh, capabilities, uh, coordinate transform, transformation, and uh, validation possibilities, and it's also um, can be used by a lot of different software like QGIS Desktop, QGIS Server, and um, GDAL or GR, and uh, yeah, pretty, uh, it has a wide support, so you could, for example, use QGIS to edit your data, 
uh, inside PostGIS and PG, PG, uh, PG Feature Surf to publish your data. Then uh, the next thing is it's um, PG, PG Feature Surf is only publishing one standard. It's uh, the OGC API Features Standard. Um, which is the successor of uh, the web feature service and uh, it uh, sh uh, shares a raw vector data. It actually, the standard has a growing support. For example, uh, QGIS uh, can read it and uh, apparently also write it, but I have not, have not tried it yet. Um, and one really cool thing is that uh, in contrast to WFS, uh, you can um, actually view the, the standard in a normal web browser using uh, the HTML output. So um, earlier with WFS, if you wanted to get some information, you have to m manually read through some uh, XML. And now you have it uh, nicely uh, displayed as an HTML, and JSON is the default exchange format. So we can, of course, uh, use a lot of different things, but JSON or GeoJSON in this case is the default. And um, I will quickly show you some comparison how these um, uh, the request works. So uh, you have a base URL and um, if you want to get information about uh, what uh, layers or collections you have, you just type collections and you get a JSON back and with WFS you just write get capabilities and you get an XML back. Um, so OGC API features is REST based. So uh, you have these uh, order here, you have the collections, then you write your collection um, name, then you get the items, and uh, with uh, um, WFS you have this query parameters. And um, m I think many people find this more intuitive than this one. So because you can still uh, type it in the, in the web browser directly and see the, the HTML directly. Um, here you can also directly see the feature ID um, when you want to see one specific item. And you can also qu do some uh, querying, like uh, you can query for the city Tartu with some filters. Yeah, so the next thing is uh, how to install it. Um, like I said before, it's written in Go, so um, it's actually one binary you can download for uh, Windows, uh, Linux, and Mac, and you just place it somewhere in your file system and uh, start with command line and it runs out of the box, so no complicated installation. Um, there's also a Docker image, but actually uh, the, the binary is so small and so easy to install that the Docker image is almost like, uh, like too, uh, too much trouble to install. So um, binary t most of the time works quite well, and um, yeah, it works on all major opera uh, operating systems. Then for configurations, there's um, um, a few ways, but um, actually when you just start it, there's no need to configure it a lot because it directly takes uh, every uh, geospatial layer um, PG Feature Surf can see. So if there's a, a layer with a ge geometry column, it will instantly be shared as a, um, uh, as a layer. So this is quite nice. Um, but you can, if you want, you can also do some tuning, there's a configuration file and there's um, some environment variables and also some command line arguments, but most of the time you don't need them. So um, there's uh, also um, a schema um, which uh, stores a lot of functions which you can also execute later on with uh, PG Feature Surf. And one interesting thing is that um, also metadata is stored inside the database directly, so you can comment on, uh, write the, use the comment functionality in Postgres and write some comments about your table column and so on, and it will be um, visible in the OGC API features. So um, they basically try to move most functionality that's possible inside uh, PostgreSQL, and this can be quite elegant. Then uh, you have a configuration file um, where you can define the database connection. It also um, has some uh, HTTPS uh, encryption and um, adding an, a course header because very often in a web development uh, uh, environment you need this. And yeah, you can do some um, fine tuning if you want to exclude some schemas which should not be published or include some tables and so on. So there's a lot of uh, fine tuning you can do. And uh, yeah, finally, uh, you can also overwrite the configuration file uh, with some um, environment variables 
which can be, is be useful for if you run uh, PG feature surf in the Docker Compose environment and also some command line options, but they are very few, so no much trouble to, inst to set it up. Then how does it look like? So when you start it, you have a landing page um, where um, you have the um, like links to the collections and to um, which uh, layers are published. So here you can, when you go to conformance, uh, you can uh, see uh, which um, standards are supported. Um, he can go here to collections and you see like the the layers which are published and here um, when you see it, it's uh, uh, slash collections dot html. So then you can uh, see it as a human in a web browser, but when you replace the HTML with JSON, then it will be instantly a JSON and it's super convenient because then it's also nice for debugging and uh, you have, you're much closer to the data in my opinion. Then, yeah, so you go to collections, then again uh, put a layer name here and then you get some uh, nice uh, description about coordinate reference system, about the properties, which data types they have and so on. Uh, there's also a built-in uh, map uh, functionality, so you can directly see it and have some uh, quick uh, look where data is and also some little uh, filtering possibility. And here you can uh, just replace the HTML of JSON and then you get the raw data. Here you can also uh, pro uh, look at a specific feature only, then you get the attributes, what it has. And um, the HTML theme I showed you um, is adaptable. So um, it can, it's uh, written in Go HTML, so it's a templating language. And let's say if your company wants to have a specific logo or you want to have your special colors, you can uh, create your own theme and you can just mount it um, to PG Feature Surf. And uh, so you don't need to pr um, change the original program, you can just uh, add your custom theme additionally, and it's uh, quite simple to to adjust it as into your wishes. Then uh, the next thing is uh, I want to show you some filtering what you can do. So <coughs> here uh, you have uh, a collection, you have countries, and then you can do some very simple filtering. It's just uh, when an attribute uh, like a, a key. You can write the, the name of an um, attribute name and then also of, of the value, and then uh, you directly get the, the result, which is, this is quite uh, convenient. So, um, because when you, um, in WFS, it's, it's a bit more complicated. and But you can also do some more complex queries with the um, CQL language here. It looks like this, but the problem, the only problem is that you have to encode it, because otherwise the browser doesn't understand it. Um, but you can already do some uh, filtering, and all the filtering is actually done inside the PostgreSQL database. So the PG feature surf, um, the Go program is only a thin layer between the HTTP requests and the PostgreSQL. <coughs> then uh, you can also do the searching directly in the web browser. You just type a name here um, of the feature, and then it will be hit. You will get the hits. So there's apparently two cities called Lima in the dataset I used. And the CQL language also supports some uh, more uh, uh, filters. So you have temporal filters. You can, uh, if your data has a date um, type, you can filter by before, after, or of a time range. Of course, geographic filters if you're only interested in a specific bound bounding box or want an intersection of a feature. And numerical filters or uh, text filters. And if this is not enough for you, um, you can actually uh, define uh, database uh, functions and then uh, you have the full power of PostgreSQL and then this database function is ex uh, like exposed um, outside to an HTTP call and then uh, a user can just uh, go to this um, um, endpoint and then inside a, um, a database function is triggered and the result uh, is returned. So I give you a very simple example. Um, which I took from the official documentation. So here is a PostgreSQL uh, function which uh, just um, uh, looks uh, for a um, feature which which starts starts with a st uh, specific name prefix, and then you can also write a comment here, and then um, it will be published here um, via um, like the 
base URL uh, slash func functions and uh, postgis for the web is uh, dot uh, place names. It's the function name and dot HTML. You get an overview of the function, what it uh, takes as a parameter and uh, what kind of um, return you get. And uh, then you can just uh, use it on a web interface. And for example, here I'm looking for all cities starting with HEM, for example, Hamburg in Germany, but there's also some other places. And then you can directly, you can directly do some kind of spatial analysis inside the browser, which is using some PostGIS uh, functionality in the background. So uh, just to uh, round it up, uh, just some similar projects that there exist. So there's a kind of sister project um, to PG uh, feature surf. It's called PG TileSurf. And it also reads from a PostGIS database, but uh, publishes vector tiles. And there's an interesting uh, podcast episode on the link uh, here from Webscaping Podcast. Another sister project uh, is called PG EventSurf. It does not have a direct geospatial um, connection, but it can. So it basically uses uh, so-called PostgreSQL notifications and redirects it to a WebSocket, which you can direct, uh, which you can use via an HTTP request. There's also a podcast episode about it, which is quite nice. And then another uh, 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 program is called PostGrest, which uh, creates a REST API from your PostGIS uh, Post, uh, database or PostGrest database. Um, which can be very useful as well. It's not uh, no OGC standard or something. It's just like a REST API, but it can be useful as a thin wrapper between uh, your web browser and uh, database. Then uh, as a f example, so there's the, um, a program called OSM to PG SQL, where you can load OSM data into PostGIS. And there's an example on the website how to publish uh, this um, OSM data, I can recommend uh, having a look there because there it shows some basic features. And then there was one um, interesting example where uh, someone created uh, PostgreSQL functions um, which are embedded inside a um, Google Sheets form. And so this PostgreSQL function can uh, will create finally SVG um, files or JSON files, so basically you can um, create uh, like images or SVG graphics um, on demand um, directly inside the PostgreSQL database and display it uh, on the web anywhere. So um, this shows that uh, you can uh, use your creativity to write really um, um, sophisticated PostgreSQL functions and expose this functionality as an I a um, API um, via um, PG Feature Surf. All right, then um, there's also some more alternatives um, I want to show. There's, um, I have the feeling in this world of like really lightweight uh, um, geospatial uh, service uh, software um, publishing services, there's a lot of more which, which you can check out. And finally, just a final conclusion, there's um, Pro, it's very lightweight, easy to install. It has some, most of the functionalities are included and has a simple web interface, but con, uh, contra-argument is it's only for vector data, only the very new OGC API features, and some uh, systems still rely on WFS, so sometimes it's not working, and uh, there's no transaction yet, so no possibility to edit the data in PostgreSQL, but there are some pull requests working on that, so it might uh, come in the future. Then, fi uh, finally, some uh, links for you if you want to explore more. And uh, yeah, then I'm finished, and thanks for your attention. Well, thank you for this talk, and let's hear some questions. Um, yes, we have one question. Thank you for the interesting talk. Um, yeah, I was uh, wondering uh, whether y so you um, showed the, the f functionality to use uh, post, uh, post GIS functions like custom post GIS function if that might be related to OGC API processes somehow, or is it related? Or it, it looked like like a custom 
endpoint or like a custom resource you, you created, right? Um, yeah, very good uh, question. I thought about this as well. So this is um, custom, so it's not OGC API processes, but it could actually um, be done that this process, or like this function um, could be also um, exposed as a OGC API processes interface. So I think it should work. So, but it's not, uh, currently it's just like a custom uh, endpoint which doesn't follow any other standard, to my knowledge at least. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. And I have actually have a second question, if that's fine. <laughs> um, so, uh, so what is exactly included in, in the binary? So you said uh, it's just a small binary I have to download, so it's just the Go program, or is the database included, um, or do I have to install the database separately? Um, yeah, you have to install the database separately. Okay, so it's just the Go uh, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Any more oh. questions? Yes. Okay. Uh, you have one? Yeah, right next. Already. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, I want it. Yeah. Yeah. I have a mic, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, short question. Um, what's the way how to, uh, to uh, use uh, custom uh, background map in the map view, like to uh, customize the template? Um, yeah, you can definitely. So there's, let's see if I have a because slide. I haven't found it in a configuration file, so I guess it like customized. Yeah, the but there for sure. Um, not. Yeah, um, I'm it, in the configuration file. There's uh, um, like a property where you can define custom uh, base map uh, with the XYZ uh, standard. So yeah. But um, yeah, I can show you later um, where you can do this uh, in the real documentation, uh, like in the real configuration. So it's definitely possible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And we had one more in the third row. Yeah, it will be a quick one. Uh, is possible to handle uh, table views and materialized views in PG Feature Server? Uh, yeah, you can also uh, have views as uh, to publish. Okay, um, I have one because I am I am a member of the OGC, the standards body, and I have worked with several OGC standards and so on. So I wanted to ask you if uh, PG Feature Server or any other lightweight servers are they have they pass all the conformance tests? Have you actually tested them with several other standard clients? Um, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> so. <laughs> But it would be actually a very good uh, thing to do this because you could probably also do this in an automated way that always when there is a new commit or a new release that you directly do a compli like conformance test. Um, yeah, good inspiration. Thanks for the tip. 